Good people, I'm Dimitri, and honestly, I was pretty excited to receive the new Fractal Design Closure to meet our 2020 expectations. And it wasn't until I started to work with the case that I started to question whether or not we have reached the whole idea of a peak case. I've always associated the Define series as extremely stable, flexible, and user-friendly from a PC building perspective. And the new Define 7 is no exception. By default, it's a fantastic, yet kind of the same enclosure that we've always gotten. Yes, they got rid of the R for an even more minimalistic product name. And the price has also increased to 159 and 160 for solid and TG options in variety of colors as usual. And the reason why I question whether or not we're this PK scenario is because all the changes that accompany the Define 7 are minor and either improve the user experience or are different for the sake of being new. So let's explore everything that Define 7 has to offer and if perhaps this should be your next case after this. Looking for the coolest RTX 20 series GPUs? Aorus has you covered with their efficient WinForce stack cooling system along with a gorgeous RGB ring illumination, an IO that's jacked for the most flexible multi-monitor setup, and the ability to experience ray tracing for current and upcoming games. Learn more down below. All right, so first of all, all the staple elements from the Define series are of course, still present. Like the brushed aluminum front door with side ventilation, it still only opens to about 90 degrees with now a new mechanism, which you can still swap to open from the other side. The panel is magnetic, but unfortunately is fairly loose. And behind it is our usual dust filter with angle down ventilation, along with a separate cover for the five and a quarter inch drive bay that by default is covered by the fan, but you can always shift those down if you're installing an optical drive in that spot. I will dive into out of box airflow cooling right away and I think everyone expected this already. The front panel is fairly restrictive and there's an 8 degrees Celsius difference on the CPU with the front panel completely removed but all those airflow barriers actually deliver an extremely quiet noise profile too. All with additional help of noise absorbing foam spread on all of the solid panels on the interior. There is a massive dust filter at the bottom removed from the front and the I.O. has grown with the addition of a Type-C Gen 2 port plus we still have four USB ports and separate audio jacks. The side panels no longer have any thumb screws. You simply pull the top tab and the panel comes off. We have some pegs at the bottom and the top to help with the panel installation. And you can also secure both side panels at the front if you plan on transporting the case. The biggest change with the 7 is the top frame that I welcome. So they've removed the whole Moduvan system and now we either have a totally solid top panel or once you pop it out, just like the side panels, we have a ventilated cover available as part of the accessories. Now, on the one hand, I appreciate the ventilation pattern consistency. It's on the top, the PSU shroud and the rear ventilation too. And I love the dust filter design, but they don't really work together visually and actually make the top of the case look really busy and out of sync. At least the dust filter is a fine mesh, but together they look quite bad. The top fan bracket is also new, now removable from the side instead of the top, giving you a completely open frame to work with, which is nice. We have our usual fill port and strips for mounting cooling hardware. And then usual fractal approach, the Define 7 can accommodate a ton of fans and radiators. Here's the graphic for an all fan option with and without the optical drive. The case is long enough for a reason, so you can do a 420 rad up top and up to a 360 at the front. Even mounting radiators at the bottom is an option too. And for anyone doing at least a dual radiator loop, the Define 7 accommodates that well, as long as the motherboard height does not exceed 36 millimeters. As for the interior, the layout is identical to the Define R6 with EATX support, great rubber grommet placement, and I gotta say, I love the whole white on black color scheme with an all new PSU shroud that I'm very happy to see. The removable front sections are plastic now, no longer metal, and are removable without any issues, just simply popped them out, which was not the case with the R6. That was a difficult thing to work with. And so this gives you either six centimeters of clearance or about 18 centimeters, and also lets you access the bottom drive cage that you can either remove or shift back depending on your front configuration. You can also convert the interior to house more drive caddies, uh, just like what the R6 comes in by default, by moving the back wall forward and then mounting the metal caddies behind it. This closes off the front of the case, but still lets you mount front and top radiators, which is nice. 
case. And finally, the case comes with three 140mm 1000 RPM fans, two at the front and one at the rear, with a new fan hub located in this perfect center top position with six three pin connectors and three four pin connectors, of course, with BWM control. I love the addition of this new PSU shroud cover, even though it is behind the side panel and not visible, it does help with cable management, along with these new plastic channels that guide all your cables where they need to be and securely tightened with Velcro straps. Now, all of these elements have evolved over time to give us the same mechanics of building a computer, but it's never been easier, which is how I think we're in this plateau of case innovation. Now, the thing is, it doesn't only apply to the Define 7, because if you look at any Fantex release, they're reusing the same internal frame and adding modifications to the exterior, uh, just simplifying the overall user experience. The same thing with NZXT with the H500 series, the H700 and above. And so that's what the Defiant 7 is all about too. But honestly, this peak case is also a bit underwhelming. The riskiest thing that Fractal Design has done with the Defiant 7 is remove the R from the model name because everything else almost feels expected. It's not a bad case, but it's not a very exciting one either. But that's really been the thing with the Defiant series from the beginning. I love the simple exterior and the complexity on the interior to make sure that the overall user experience is fantastic, and it is with Define 7. I do think that we have to accept these mainstream hero products for what they are because they are safe and they will sell and hope for more risky releases sometime in the future. So that's the Define 7. Let me know what you think of this case. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. As usual, all the links will be in the description below for cases and other recommendations. Check out this other relevant content and I'll see you in the next video.